It's a very good question. Certainly, it's a very important industry. We, we, we know that. It's a very complex industry. It's manifold. And really, the solution to the energy problem has to come from many sources, not just one. And so the first thing to do is really to understand the, the complexity and the richness of the energy picture. Um, and then to figure out where the person who is interested in the industry can make a contribution. And there are many places to make contributions, both from the standpoint of conceptually as well as many scientific and technical innovations. So for the energy industry, there's uh, huge, there's no question there's a huge unmet need. And so, uh, you know, in some cases you wonder, okay, if I'm, if I'm going to do something or work on something, is it really going to matter? I mean, there's no question that this is, an area, this is one of those big problems. And the National Academy of Engineering spent a lot of time identifying big problems that engineers could help solve. And, and energy from many dimensions, uh, you know, was, was significant on that list. And so since there's such a big unmet medical need, there's going to be a lot of solutions. So there's lots of opportunities to, to get involved and, and make things happen in the energy area. Inevitably, we are looking for cleaner energy, a more, let's say, responsible carbon footprint um, we are looking for less dependence on fossil. We are looking for find the, tapping into the, the energy sources that are all around us. So um, there is going to be innovation in all aspects. I think there will be innovation in nuclear. I think nuclear is going to be, prediction, going to be an important part. We have to learn how to handle some of the issues, but it's going to be. You know, we have to learn uh, about renewable energy. We have to learn about capturing carbon, big issue. Uh, we have to learn about power storage. So it's it's that's why it's such an exciting area, especially for engineering and science-based companies, because there's a lot of opportunity. I think it's going to be a fine-tuning of all of the pieces that are currently available, but with an eye to create cleaner and more sustainable energy. So it's, it's definitely going to be a mix. Um, it will be an evolution from where we are, because uh, things do move slowly. So one of my favorite examples is I just bought an electric car. And um, the EV1, which uh, was an electric car developed and sold by General Motors in the late 1990s, their, their concept car was originally in 1990. They put it on the market in 1996. They quit selling it in 99, and then they crushed them all. And you know, now we dial forward another decade, and, and uh, electric cars aren't ubiquitous yet, but they are becoming more prevalent. Um, I have mine charging over by Treseter, and I just got a um, text on my iPhone telling me the charging was finished, and I can turn the charging off uh, remotely, which is, which is pretty neat. Nice convergence of technologies. But um, it's just for me, is it just a specific example of how things take a long time to evolve, especially in the energy, in, uh, especially in the energy area. In a way, Look at the sun. The sun is a nuclear reactor. It's happening continuously. There's fusion. That's, that's all there. That, that source. Of, so in a way, our source of energy is fusion. Ideally, if we could harness fusion, maybe not 20 years, but maybe 100 or 200 years, OK? Again, Star Trek. I've forgotten some of my old Star Trek movies. Um, but you know, the answer may be in that, because I think solar energy, we can't quite do fusion yet today, but it's happening up there. So how do we tap it better? OK, how do we store it? And in a sense, renewable energy is another form of solar energy. OK, if you use biomass, it is the sun who is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's one full circle. Life is one full circle there. So I think um, as we move into the next couple of decades, 
solar energy is going to be key. And if I had only one source, I would try to tap as much as possible into either directly the sun or indirectly through biomass or renewable. As Ricardo mentioned, I'm, I'm a big proponent of the sun. And uh, it's there every day. I do have solar panels on my house, so that doesn't completely charge my car, but it <laughs> helps a little bit towards the, the electricity that's needed, um, needed for my car. Um, I'm also a bit, but when people say solar, they typically think of uh, you know, solar panels or, or photovoltaics. Um, you know, Ricardo did mention um, fission, fusion, fusion, I've got to get that right, fusion. <coughs> and um, uh, I'm also intrigued by some of the things, for example, people are doing with algae to make oils for feedstocks for the chemical industry. So a very direct way of taking the solar energy using the algae's photosynthetic processes to produce oils, which you can then take and, and uh, use as petrochemical feedstocks. I actually think, especially for the developed world, it would be fantastic because it'll be nice and quiet and we'll all for a moment come in true touch with nature. Okay, that's the easy answer. I mean, that's complicated. They are, you know, suddenly you'll talk to each other. I mean, look what happened when, when power went out in the East Coast. I, my wife was actually there in New York. Um, New Yorkers started talking to each other, for God's sake. So I, I, think, I think the world will survive. Yeah, so if there was one day without energy, we would have so many uh, unmet needs identified that we could keep everyone busy as entrepreneurs for a really long time.